aspire to be spiritually awake as quickly as possible, but that we cultivate intensively, that is, with concentrated endeavor, our innate capacities, bring them forth, do what can be done to allow our innate knowledge of self and God to be revealed, unveiled, and to blossom. Teaching us right living because what disturbs our minds in life is when we don't follow truthful living. Right? When, when we stray away from truth, then our minds become disturbed by our conscience. When I, interview, I interviewed over 300 people from American Veda and I asked them how they first got involved with Indian teachings. Many of them would mention a book. Usually somebody gave me a copy of such and such. What book do you think is the most often mentioned? I like the Very good. So this was another key moment. Yogananda came in 1920. He was the first major guru to settle here, made his headquarters L.A. How many of you have ever felt, even for a split second, that you really had everything that you needed? Okay. Humans, they're looking for that, and every once in a while, we get it. What yoga affirms is the potential and the possibility and the occasional reality of our perfection. That if you do these things and live right and think right, you're going to experience progressive spiritual growth whether you expire to do it or not. If you get unstressed and you're healthy and, 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 and effectively functional and emotionally stable, then the obstacles to spontaneous spiritual growth are for the most part absent and you're going to experience natural spiritual awakening in the course of time. I will put my hand momentarily on your forehead and share with you a moment of silent blessing. But I'm sharing with you my goodwill and I'm seeing, seeing you whole and perfect and loving and blessing you and wishing you uh, to the realization of your highest good and the blessings of God and the Masters uh, in your life. So that's what I do uh, sharing that moment with you. Oh, in the heart.